Today in the show we have Xbox and EY expanded offering, Brazilian digital certificates on blockchain, and Fish World Track. I'm your host Mauricio Magaldi and this is Block Drops, your weekly digest on blockchain for business. These news are not a form of endorsement, sponsorship, or encouragement for consumption and are meant for educational purposes only. On our first drop today, uh, we are revisiting one topic from earlier in the year where we reported uh, EMY's uh, project with Microsoft's Xbox in handling um, digital rights management for games. And this week, uh, we're bringing to you an expansion on it. Uh, EY and Xbox announced that they are now expanding their offering to allow game studios, artists, musicians, composers, writers, design artists to actually formalize and track their contracts for the games that are being played on Xbox's platforms from the moment that they sign the contract to the moment where they receive the royalties from the games being played. So it's a much wider and much bigger and comprehensive solution than the original one. I mean, building on top of the original one but now expands to include not only blockchain as part of the solution, but also a artificial intelligence component from uh, Microsoft's Azure that will help them formalize and register the contract onto the blockchain. So Microsoft plans to use this expanded functions to enable all of the gaming partners, as I mentioned, Uh, to collect their payments, the royalty payments from those contracts. And EY expects that this will help the business-to-business enterprise clients to have a contractually driven multi-party cash flow distribution to create similar blockchain platforms to help them automate contract-related calculations and processing. That means that the expectation is that this solution will serve as the financial system of record across companies, across uh, ERPs. Meaning that now, any multiple engagement, be it a business to business to business, will be able to not only uh, record the transactions across the parties that are involved, but also obtain a de facto financial accounting system of record that is now distributed across the enterprises, across the various ERPs, which is a not small side effect of the gaming process. So clever point there for uh, EMY in that um, scenario. So with this expanded blockchain, Microsoft will now be able to accelerate contract uh, digitization uh, for the faster contract creation using an an, an AI component from Azure. It will seamlessly generate and integrate statements and invoices across ERPs to process and record the royalties at increased speed and much bigger visibility and transparency. It will be able to generate accounting entries from the blockchain platform onto the existing ERP applications, so it's going to be much more integrated um, at at the accounting level, and incorporate controls and compliance standards required to meet criteria for this solution to function as the financial system of record. So this is a, a, a big improvement in terms of the gaming industry, but but it's a much bigger improvement for any regular enterprise beyond the gaming industry that has any relationship across ERPs. So this is a very positive gain across not only the gaming industry, but also the enterprise usage uh, of blockchain across ERP. So again, uh, it's uh, we've, we've seen a surge in solutions for digital rights management 
Um, again, Microsoft leading the pack with the gaming industry, but we're seeing other solutions uh, coming out of the woodworks for films, for um, art pieces, for paintings, for uh, digital music, um, and now, of course, gaming. So we'll, we'll keep track of that because this is a very interesting industry and it has, as EOI has already perceived uh, and captured, implications across other industries as well. Our second drop is a Brazilian note or a Brazilian newsworthy subject, which is an announcement by the government in Brazil that they will start now requiring that for the certificate entities or the entities that provide the digital certificate under um, ICP Brazil, which is the uh, agency that uh, regulates uh, digital certificates in Brazil, they now will be required to use blockchain technology to record the timestamps of those digital signatures. See, it's not it's not the digital signature that has to be issued on a blockchain. That's not what the uh, government is now requiring. But if you are a digital certifier, you will have to record the timestamp of those signatures onto a blockchain. And I think the point of controversy from this particular instruction, from the uh, technical manual of the um, technical manual from the ICP Brazil, is that they are explicit as to what the type of blockchain has to be. They explicitly say Hyperledger Fabric. So the use of a non-Brazilian native technology for a Brazilian native regulation might spark some controversy. That's number one. Second is the biggest providers for this particular blockchain framework uh, in Brazil are non-Brazilians. So they're all foreign companies that are providers for that particular technology. And maybe the third is that um, by, by being that specific, it vetoes out other potentially Brazilian technologies that could do the same work um, as, as the framework. So I'm not going to take sides. I think it's important for the people that are involved to understand the implications of this particular instruction. Um, for the industry to uh, organize itself in terms of, you know, what is... What is our point of view and what, as an industry, we understand uh, that it would be best for the country in this particular space. But of course, uh, it's, it's, it's for the government to you know, decide as to what is specifically um, being required for you know, in the technical and functional aspect for this. Uh, what is most interesting, though, for me is that this particular use case of time stamping onto a blockchain is no stranger for us in Brazil because Original Mai, which is a Brazilian startup, uh, which I think I met in 2017, was already doing time stamping for many documents using a Bitcoin sidechain. So it's what's most interesting to me is that now the government is speaking up on something that the crypto world has already started doing three years ago or more uh, in the case of original my so um, it takes time it takes time uh, it takes a lot of education it takes the evolution of competing technologies but we'll see more and more government solutions being moved to uh, blockchain uh, architecture because the nature of most of the government agencies is that they have distributed responsibilities across specific uh, topics and in terms of making everything visible to the stakeholders 
in a distributed um, organization such as the government agencies, blockchains or blockchain-based solutions are uh, still the best that we've seen. So interesting to see how this topic evolves. We'll keep track on this uh, with the people that are uh, raising uh, the questions about it and maybe bring a few of them uh, onto the show to discuss their perspectives on this and any other specific topics uh, around the adoption of blockchain in government. Our last drop for the week and for the year is a very classic use case that you've heard me talk about for many other in, in instances in the show. But this one is uh, particularly special because it's from a province in Spain, the province of Galicia, if I said this right, um, that will track fish, or as they say there, pescado, for uh, the consumption with two very particular focuses. One is that they are using a blockchain supplier that is focused in interoperability. And because the world will not have one single provider of traceability for food, interoperability becomes key for implementing traceability across the world in multiple blockchains. So Votun, or Votun, which is the provider of the solution for Fish World Track, is aiming to have multiple blockchains being written on by this Fish World uh, Track solution, because of course uh, there are multiple blockchains doing food traceability, and fish is consumed worldwide. So that's an upside. And the second upside is that it's not only tracing logistics uh, attributes such as who did what, when, under what temperature, from which point to other point, meaning transportation, meaning storage, meaning um, factory certificates or even professional certificates for whoever uh, is responsible for that particular batch. But they will also track sustainability attributes, which for uh, the consumer is increasingly more important uh, in terms of information. So if you're fishing from a, a particular region where there is a reserved period of time in the year where that region cannot be uh, used for uh, industrial fishing, then you'll know that the fish that you're consuming is not from that particular period or region where it could not be uh, supplied from. That means you're getting the fish that is under sort of sustainability uh, compliance. Also, if there's like sizes of fishes, even though the region is cleared for fishing, but if the fishes don't have specific uh, weights or sizes to them, then you can't um, pipe them into uh, production. They get to, they they have to be uh, used for other means or other or, or other ends. Uh, again, you you can trace all of that information by using Fish World Track, and you'll prevent. And you're even going to prevent that particular batch from going into consumer consumption because it's not sustainable uh, or it's not compliant to the sustainability uh, attributes. Uh, the reason why they're starting in Galicia is because, of course, the companies involved are from Galicia, but also because Galicia is a central piece in the fishing industry for Spain. And they're starting off... Uh, already with three large companies from the fishing industry, Caladero, Pesca Puerta e Frioja, or Frio, Frioja. And they 
they're going to start big and they're going to start also internationalizing the company. I spoke to the people involved. They're going to start internationalizing the operations uh, next year. So they're bringing um, their operation to Latin America. We have uh, very fish heavy countries as such as Chile, uh, such as Brazil in Latin America. Um, of course, there is a big in interest in having uh, those industries also captured uh, as part of the blockchain. So interesting aspect of this particular solution. We will uh, try and bring some of the people involved to talk to us on a block talks in the future. And for now, we're just going to keep tabs on how this project will evolve. Block Drops podcast is available on Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts, and most of the major podcast platforms. You can contact us by email on blockdropspodcast at gmail.com, on Instagram at blockdropspodcast, and on Twitter at blockdropspod. And the shout outs and the hollers today are for my good friend Rafael Sarris from Brazilian Central Bank, whom I interviewed for a, the next uh, Block Talks. We talk about many things, including central bank digital currencies. Also for my friend Israel Serrano, my former IBM colleague that's now involved leading uh, Fish World Track. Fulvio Xavier from EY, who always shares interesting uh, evolutions on baseline xbox and any other uh, things that they're doing with blockchain and also this being the last episode or regular episode of the year i want to thank all of my listeners all of my uh, uh, industry peers that contributed with topics for the episodes throughout the year wish you all a very merry christmas happy holidays and a much happier and lighter 2021 this is all for now see you next time ciao